Riverside Healthcare puts the health and wellness information you need well within reach. And welcome to the podcast. I'm Carl Moronich, and today we are joined by Dr. Arun Jagannathan. Doctor, welcome. Thanks for having me, Carl. We're glad you're here. And you are an interventional radiologist. And today we're going to be talking about uterine fibroid embolization. But before we get into that conversation, we want to get a little background. As an interventional radiologist, tell folks just what it is that you do. So, Carl, a vascular and interventional radiologist is a radiologist who has done additional subspecialization in using the image guidance techniques that we have available to, in order to do minimally invasive procedures. Um, for example, we will we have been trained into in doing minimally invasive procedures using a CT scan to guide us, ultrasound, real time X ray, um, and using a combination of these uh, modalities as necessary. Well, yeah. you you're you're a young man still, so you haven't been in practice that long. But in the time that you have been in practice, have you seen this technology advance? Are you able to do things now that you weren't able to do when you started? We definitely have. We have. Um, we have seen advances, advancements in the actual imaging technologies themselves, as well as advancements in the in the tools that we use to do our procedures. Advancements yeah. in the type of catheters, microcatheters, <laughs> embolization materials that we have available. Yeah. Well, you you know, I know our TVs at home are getting bigger and better definition. So if the TVs are doing that, I'm sure this the equipment you're working on, the same thing is happening. So that's that's good for all of us that doctors have this technology. It's good for watching a ball game, but it's even better for looking at, uh, at parts of the body, right? Absolutely. Okay. And one part of the body we're going to talk about is the uterus and uterine fibroid embolization. Talk a little bit about what that procedure is. So uterine artery embolization or uterine fibroid embolization w is a minimally invasive method in which uh, we can treat patients that have symptomatic uterine fibroids. Um, symptomatic uterine fibroids can cause a wide array of symptoms from, uh, from prolonged heavy bleeding um, during during a patient's cycles to mass-related symptoms such as um, pelvic heaviness, fullness, um, and a whole host of other symptoms. So through uterine artery embolization, we're able to now treat these minimally invasively um, through a pinhole in either the wrist or the groin um, as an outpatient and have the patient uh, discharge either the same day or the next day and uh, you know back to work within a week. Are uterine fibroids something most women, many women are going to going to deal with in their lifetime? Uh, uterine fibroids are very, very common. Um, they, anywhere from one third to one half of women will actually have uterine fibroids. Now, the number of women that actually have symptomatic fibroids is much smaller than that. Um, and it tends to peak around 35 to about 45 years of age, uh, more common in African-American women. Uh, but again, a very, very common disease process. Um, it is a benign tumor, not a pre-malignant tumor that affects and, uh, and adversely affects a, a large pop percentage of our female population. Yeah. And I would guess, as with many things in those patients, the, the severity of those symptoms really vary, I would guess. Definitely. There is a huge range. Um, a, number of, a number of women may have very large fibroids that are not as symptomatic, and some women have, sm have smaller fibroids that are very symptomatic. It can depend on the location, the vascularity of the fibroids. Um, a lot of... Uh, a lot of what we uh, what what we're doing in our in our evaluation process is determining where the fibroids are based on our imaging studies, and then determining what we think is the most appropriate treatment for those. Yeah. And when you talk about fibroids, uh, uterine fibroids, what is the the percentage of those that, that require hysterectomies, or is there a link between those and hysterectomies? I I would say personally, in my mind, uh, there are not that many patients that are suffering from fibroids that require a hysterectomy. Uh, patients that would require hysterectomy really would have have to have fibroids so large that they cannot be treated effectively through this through a minimally invasive method. Mm -hmm. um, so a very small percentage, I would say. So if a woman uh, in the age range that you said is is having some of the symptoms you talked about, um, what what should their first tactic be? First thing they should do. I think the first thing they should do is definitely work with their gynecologist. The gynecologist is their expert and uh, is their is their provider, women's health provider, that's going to be able to provide them um, the the full array of options as far as treating these fibroids, anywhere from watchful waiting to medications to uh, minimally invasive treatments, such as a referral to us for uterine artery embolization or something more 
um, definitive and and more invasive like a hysterectomy or a myomectomy. Yeah. So in, in what you just said, if, if someone does have a uterine fibroid, embolization isn't necessarily going to have to happen. It, it may be a kind of a watch and wait situation. Definitely. It depends on the patient, depends on what, they, what they'd like to do. If they'd like to try a, uh, a medical treatment, um, if they'd like to move to something more invasive, uh, such as a hysterectomy or a myomectomy, um, that should, that's definitely their choice. I think that it's just most important that they provided every single option. Sure. And, and the benefit of the embolization versus some of the other more, more uh, advanced procedures would be what? The benefit of the embolization is that it's an outpatient procedure that can be done with conscious sedation. Um, so no general anesthesia done as an outpatient through a tiny puncture in either the wrist or the groin, which uh, um, not even a single suture is utilized to close, close the wound. And uh, quicker recovery in comparison to a hysterectomy or myomectomy and back to work within a week versus, you know, potentially four weeks or uh -huh. more. If you will, talk a little bit about some of the patients that you've been able to uh, to um, do this procedure on and, and the, the difference you've been able to make. I'm sure you've had women who have, as you described the condition initially, you know, there can be a lot of pain with that just depending on different circumstances, and you're able to, to, to give relief to that. Can you talk a little bit about some of the, the extreme patients that you've been able to help uh, with this condition? We've had a number of patients that 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 really did not, uh, did not want to consider any other option uh, because they didn't want to have something very invasive like a hysterectomy or a myomectomy done. And until they had learned on their own of the uterine artery embolization procedure, they had thought that they would just have to live with this until they went through menopause. So potentially I, I had, I've had patients that thought they would be dealing with this for another five, six, seven years. They were in their early 40s. And we were able to then um, get them to the point where they had uh, market improvement in their in their in their lifestyle um, within a matter of a couple of months after the procedure. Oh. And is this uh, the the fibroids are, are probably not something that a woman can do anything to to try to prevent. It's just kind of a, a, something that happens in anatomy. Is that is that correct? Or are there things women can do to try to decrease the likelihood? There isn't anything they can do. Oh. Um, no, there's. There are things that can be done from the standpoint of medical treatments that can potentially reduce the um, hormone-related growth of these fibroids or symptoms related to the fibroids, um, but uh, there is nothing that you can do that could prevent the, mm. the growth of this benign mm. tumor. So then it's more a matter of being in tune with your body, knowing if there are changes when you notice those kinds of symptoms you know, react properly, get, get them checked out? Absolutely. If you're having those symptoms, um, then you need to have at the very least a uh, pelvic ultrasound or determine if you have significant fibroids. And if you have significant large, uh, large fibroids that are, you know, that are, that, that are uh, um, resulting in these type of symptoms, then you need to evaluate all of your options yeah. um, everywhere from, you know, anything as, as, as minimally invasive as a uterine artery embolization up to a hysterectomy oh. should be evaluated and, and considered. Yeah. Through a lot of these podcasts, some of the, the clinicians that we talk to, it oftentimes comes back to, you know, regularly getting checkups and making sure you, you, know, you eat healthy lifestyle and making sure you're in tune with your body and getting regular checkups. So when something does start to develop, you can get it early. And that's kind of constant good advice, I would think. Absolutely. Uh, um, you know, we, we're talking about uh, fibroid embolization, but in the work you do, are there, I mean, one, have you seen more of these? Is this something that, you know, over the decades, there's been an increase in the number of, or are, is it kind of holding steady and, and you get the same number of women annually that, that you know, there's always been? I think there's been a kind of a steady growth um probably in the last 30 to 40 years in the in, in women developing symptomatic fibroids not not a huge change though now uh, getting away from the specific procedure of fibroid embolization just talking more generally about the work that you do as an interventional radiologist what what are the kind of the top 5 different procedures that you do if there are you know some that you do more often and and more regularly so i would say the procedures that we do um Embolization-wise, the most common ones are the uterine artery embolization for fibroid treatments. Um, we do uh, a large number of liver-directed therapies, embolizations mm -hmm. to decrease uh, liver tumors. 
Um, we do a number of um, venous procedures, both deep and superficial venous procedures, patients that have deep venous clots. We will dissolve clots, remove clots, pulmonary embolism. Will... Thrombosis? Is Thrombosis, that is correct. Issue? Yeah. Correct. Superficial venous disease, we treat all forms of superficial venous disease. Um, we do biopsies, drainages. Um, we do... Um, a variety of things. A variety certainly. of things. We drain yeah. fluid from basically everywhere in the body as yeah. necessary. Yeah. As, as I asked a little earlier, are there any condi of those conditions and other things that you do? Are you seeing any more of those as time goes on? Or the way you know society change, ha eating habits, you mentioned those earlier. Uh, are you seeing any more of a certain kind of procedure than you saw earlier in your career? Definitely. As the population ages, we, we see a lot more cancer. Mm. Um, so we have a larger population of cancer patients in the area that we do um, a number of minimally invasive treatments for. We'll place long-term venous access uh, with implantable venous access ports for these patients to receive chemotherapy. We will diagnose them with uh, their biopsy. If they have develop fluid in their lungs or their abdomen, we may place a drain. Um, if they develop tumors um, in particular organs, we can treat them minimally invasively either uh, through administering chemo embolization, uh, sorry, administering chemotherapy through embolization particles or radiation through embolization particles. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the incidence of cancer is, is definitely uh, rising. Doctor, you've shared a lot of good information. If someone wants to contact your office, how might they go about doing that? So we actually see our patients in clinic. Um, so we have a clinic that... Uh, that we do all of our initial consultations uh, with patients with. Um, so uh, patients can can self-refer and call directly to the clinic if they, have if they have uterine fibroids and they feel they may be potentially a candidate for the procedure, they could call us directly or they can be referred by their uh, primary or specialist physician to us. Oh, very good. And again, as we talked about earlier, at first sign of anything, primary care provider is the route to go. And if there's something more that's needed, then uh, the, the referral would go to you or the appropriate specialist. Definitely. If it's an emergency, go to the ER, but otherwise go to the primary doc. Yeah. Very good. Dr. Arun Jaganathan, we appreciate your time and expertise. All right. Thank you, Carl.